In the video Prayer 1, I asked you, what is your will when you pray? To think about it and look at yourself and ask yourself, what really is your will when you go to pray? For yourself or others? Do you really want everyone around you to get their act together so you can live a good life? Everyone's pain just to go away because... You don't want to really see people in pain because it makes you feel sad or uncomfortable. And maybe just you throw out some cliches at people so that it just goes away. So it doesn't bother you. So what is your will? A person called and asked to have prayers of healing for their mate. They had asked the pastor in their church to pray, but were frustrated and disturbed with the outcome of what was said by the pastor to the congregation. Unknown to this person, this particular pastor did not believe that anyone is healed at this time. Yet, when this person asked the pastor to pray, the pastor said yes, and the name of this person's mate was put on their prayer list. How effective are prayers of healing by people who do not believe that God heals. The person asking for prayer was very hurt by this betrayal at a time when they were facing much fear and trauma. This is why I ask you, what is your will? God the Father has a plan for all mankind. That plan follows a way, as it is called the way. In Deuteronomy 5.33, you shall walk in all the way which Yeshua your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you will possess. And in Deuteronomy 10, Now Israel, what does Yeshua your God require from you? But to reverence your God, to walk in all his ways and love him, and to serve Yeshua with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep God's commandments and statutes, which I am commanding you to get today, for your good. Why? If you have a child who's having a birthday, where they've reached the legal drinking age, and they drive a vehicle, do you not love them enough to give them a way to conduct themselves, so that they come home safe and sound in one piece? Why? Because there's predators out there. Your child may drive safely. They may be very responsible and not drink and drive. And they may not leave their drink unattended at a bar or a party. They're going, they are going, that they're going to, but you know there are predators out there and others who don't do the same. Our loving Father in Heaven tells us to walk in His way so that we are protected from the enemy, so that we do not open a door for the enemy to enter. I have been told in the past by people from a Christian organization that I talk too much about Satan because they don't concentrate on Satan. Really? Well, he concentrates on you. I remember the day my dad looked out the kitchen window years ago into the field to see the sheep eating and a coyote walking around them, going in them and stalking them. They didn't even notice. My dad did not just sit there. He sent out his dog to defend the sheep. Sitting ducks, those sheep were. There are too many times to count when we have been kept alive by the mercy of God. But to be really effective, to be re really make a difference in people's lives, in our community, our nation, and the world, takes, it takes wisdom, discernment, and understanding of the way of God the Father, Yeshua, and to be able to hear clearly from the Holy Spirit, so you know which way to go, to the right or to the left, or what you are to do. In Psalm 119, verse 130, it says, your, t your testimonies are wonderful, therefore, Yeshua, therefore my soul observes them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth wide and panted, for I longed for your commandments. 
Turn to me and be gracious to me after your manner with those who love your name. Make my footsteps or establish my footsteps in your word. And do not allow any iniquity to have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of water because they do not keep your law. We can see an effect when we don't keep his law. What sorrow comes. Righteous are you, O Yeshua, and upright are your judgments. You have commanded your testimonies in righteousness and exceeding faithfulness. My zeal has consumed me because my adversaries have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Understanding the word is going to give you life. I cried with all my heart, answer me, O Yeshua, I will observe your statutes. I cried to you, save me, and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before dawn and cry for help, and I wait for your words. My eyes anticipate the night watchman, that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. Revive me, O Yeshua, according to your ordinances. Those who follow after wickedness draw near. They are far from your law. You are near, O Yeshua, and all your commandments are truth. Of old I have known from your testimonies that you have, unfounded, you have founded them forever. They will never go away. Words are very important. In the beginning in Genesis 1, it says, Light be, or expanse be. Words are vessels that create, and they are vessels that the Creator spoke, and it was, it was, and it was good. Words created the universe. In Deuteronomy 32, 47, we are told, For it is not an idle word for you, indeed it is your life. And by this word you will prolong your days in the land which you ha are about to cross the Jordan to possess. It is by the word that you will prolong your days. In Proverbs 18, 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love them will eat the fruit of it. So, words of death, you will eat the fruit of it. Words of life, you will eat the fruit of that. Why? Because there is an enemy, and it is Satan. In 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober of spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Our loving Father in heaven did not want us to be sheep, pretending that if we can't see Satan or don't concentrate on him, then he cannot affect us. The way, the way of love, long life, peace, and blessings is of Yeshua. So this is why I asked, what's your will? For in Isaiah 32, 6, for a fool speaks nonsense and his heart inclines toward wickedness. His heart will speak words of wickedness. To practice ungodliness and to speak error against God when you don't know the word, and you don't have that wisdom and that discernment and understanding of the word, you're, you will speak nonsense to keep the hungry person unsatisfied and to withhold drink from the thirsty. Your prayers will, that you have will have people unsatisfied, thirsty. Where you have set your will, what you have established in your heart, you will speak. Once those words go out, they're vessels that are creating you have sowed a word seed, and it will bring back a harvest. In which field have you sowed that word? If your word lines up with the word of God and his promises, then it, can be, it will activate the angels, because they only move when they receive the word of God, not your words. If your word does not line up, then Satan has full legal right to the door you just opened. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in Yeshua in the strength of his might. 
Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. You are to know what's going on, to have that wisdom, discernment, and understanding, and be able to stand firm by speaking it into situations. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness. Yeah, there's a spirit world that says it right there. Against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and have done everything, everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, which you, you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. The word of God is a sword in your right hand, but our will needs to be lined up with his if you really want to see things change for the good. His word needs to dwell in our hearts by reading, meditating, and acting on his word so that we can speak it out. Vessels that will create that the angels will be activated upon immediately. There is a prayer, which is words, that blesses others by activating all the promises of God. And there are prayers, which are words, which open the door for Satan to have full right to act upon. We bless you with wisdom, discernment, and understanding of our Father's way, the way of life. For he is love, and his ways are love, life, and blessings. Amen.